Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Malachi. Thus says the Lord, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness." Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. The word of the Lord. for us. 
reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. Because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having pr produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. 
Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. During the time of all these great men, when the palace at Rome was ruled by this guy, and the governor mansions were full of these powerful folks, and the temple was overseen by those guys, when all these important men were in power, the word of God came to a weirdo in the wilderness. The word of God bypasses the palaces and temples to begin in the wilderness. It slips past kings and high priests to come to a wild man in the middle of nowhere. This setup is not an accident. Luke knows exactly what he is doing here with this contrast between the places of power and the wilderness. The appropriate context for the story Luke is about to tell, for the story of the Word of God, is world history. This story is the hinge of the world it will shake the foundations of the palaces and temples. And it begins with, of all people, John. There's a lot to unpack there. First, Luke isn't just drawing a contrast. He's also being a careful historian. The actual historical accuracy of Luke's gospel is less important than the theological point that he is making. Part of the reason he lists all these rulers is to establish the historical moment. The gospel takes place in history, in specific human history. The word of God comes into the real day-to-day -day of human life when actual stuff was going on, when the world was its usual messy self. The, wor the word of God enters into that specific mess. Luke's theological point is that Christianity is not locked into eternity, hovering somewhere perpetually outside of our reach. God's reality breaks into specific, real human situations. It happened in a unique way in Palestine 2,000 years ago, but the very, very good news is that it happens still. God's reality can break now into the messy realness of our lives, when Joe was president and Brian was governor and Frank was bishop and mom was sick and money was tight and relations were strained with our son-in-law and a pandemic just wouldn't end. Whatever real earthy mess your life is or my life is, it is the kind of mess into which the word of God 
comes. The Word of God breaks into history, but probably not the way we would expect. I spent some time this week wondering whether John the Baptist would have been able to find an Episcopal church where he would have felt welcome. Yes, his dad was a priest. We would have liked that. But he lived in the wild, dressed in camel hair rags, subsisted on an insect-based diet, and, as we'll see next week, spoke with quite a bit of color. He was an opinionated guy. The word of God came not to kings, governors, or priests, but to this strange man. It came not through palaces and temples, but in the wilderness. This is not to say that the word of God cannot come to the powerful. It's just to emphasize that it can come to anyone, anywhere. Success and power are not head starts in the kingdom of God. And we, who so easily have let our attention become captive to the powerful, who have all become news junkies, tracking the incompetence and wickedness of our rulers every waking moment, may be looking in the wrong place if we are looking for the kingdom of God. We may do better to look among those far from the centers of power, those who don't quite fit in, those living in the unpopular and dangerous places. When the word of God came in its most decisive way to prepare the way of the Lord, it came there. In Advent, we are to be preparing, yes, for Christmas, but also for the ways that Jesus still comes to us and one day will come decisively again. Jesus is still coming into the mess of our real embodied lives, bringing love and life. John tells us to repent, and if you're anything like me, there's plenty of repenting to do to prepare your heart for the coming of God. But we might also prepare by looking, by looking at the places we've come to think of as wilderness, by looking to the people we too often pay little attention to, and then also by looking closely at our own lives, not just as something to be sorry for or worried about or proud of or irritated by, but as the place, the messy real place where God is still coming. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father.
church and the welfare of the world. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our presiding bishop, Michael, for our bishop, Frank, for our clergy, Eric, Bill, and Irwin, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace, especially for our neighbors in Brunswick. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, for those in prison, and for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially for David, Sammy, Sam, Sandra, Brenda, John, Mickey, John, June, Hester, Aria, Bill, Margaret, Reese, George, Lewis, Sid, Pete, Reba, Keisha, Lois, Alice, Norm, Teresa, Bernice, Marty, Barbara, Wayne, Melanie, Richard, Bobby, Joan, Tommy, Lori, Odell, Linda, Mason, Jan, Jean, Mike, Andy, John, Joni, Jennifer, Diane, Connie, Laney, Zachary, Cindy, Mary, Mara, Sharon, Donnie, Aaron, Greg, Bobby, Jan, Bob, Beverly, Burnett, Jessica, Jameson, Ryan, Benjamin, Alicia, and Tiffany. I ask your prayers for all health care providers first responders, essential workers, and all who offer of themselves in service to others, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Pray that they will be comforted and renewed. I ask your prayers for those who are serving our country at home and abroad, especially Sam, Jonathan, Dylan, Joe, Zach, Graham, Toby, Trey, Joe, Sylvan, Jim, Zachary, and Bennett. Pray that they may be strengthened by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died, especially Daryl and Martha Schaemacher. I ask your prayers with gratitude for all that God has given us and all the ways God has enabled us to live, and especially this week for the gift of Jane and Blakely Chandler and for the birth of Elizabeth Morris, daughter of Rebecca and Jerry Ashmore, granddaughter of Becky Smith. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God,
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning and I want to extend a special welcome to those joining us through the radio or on Facebook. Also, if you're visiting with us this morning and would like to get to know St. Paul's better and would like to give us a chance to get to know you a little bit better, in most of the pews there are little cards that say connect on them and if you were to fill one out and um, and give it to an usher on your way out of church, uh, then I'll have a way to reach out to you and sit down for a cup of coffee and begin the process of getting to know each other a little bit better. Immediately after church today, we're gonna have a special reception up in the River Room, celebrating a transformative gift to St. Paul's from Dr. and Mrs. Blakely Chandler. Jane and Blakely left their beautiful home to the church for the proceeds to establish the Jane and Blakely Chandler Endowment Fund. When it matures, this fund will support the mission of St. Paul's and give special consideration to Christ Church right down the street with us. We're, from us, we're very pleased to have some members of the Chandler family with us this morning. The gift is a testament to the Chandler's generosity, to their vision and passion for the church's work in the world. It's also a testament to their relationship with the Reverend George Muir recently retired from St. Paul's. George's pastoral friendship with the Chandlers made this new fund possible. Parishioner Gardell Lewis managed the sale of the house. After George had retired, senior warden Ashley Wright oversaw the whole process and was the primary point of contact with the family. The gift is a reminder to us both that our individual relationships of love and care can have large social impact and also that whatever gifts we bring um, can be given to God and, and transform, transform the world, whether those gifts are uh, a house or skill in selling a house or skill in overseeing a large and complicated process. Um, all can be given to God in a fruitful way. Please join us immediately after church uh, in the River Room to celebrate. There are other important announcements as well. In the back of your bulletin, I'll highlight just a couple. Today is our last chance to pick up lists for our Angel Tree project. We are collecting gifts both for our neighbors who are experiencing homelessness and for our friends at Hornsby School. Those gifts are due Saturday morning when we will have a breakfast here at the church to sort and wrap the gifts. That breakfast is free but is RSVP so we can make sure we have enough eggs uh, to cook. So uh, more details in the back of your bulletin. Pick up the information on the East Portico on your way to the River Room. Get some gifts for some folks who could really use them and then come have a delicious breakfast to eat them. Uh, not to eat them, eat a breakfast, sort them and wrap them. Wednesday morning, we'll have our second Advent quiet day from 9 to about noon. If you find yourself free during those hours this week, please come on by and join us for three hours of quiet, quiet. Finally, I'll remind you of how we're receiving communion these days. Uh, when it's time to distribute communion, you'll come forward to the altar rail. We're giving out the bread and dipping it in the wine for you and giving you a piece of bread that has already been dipped in wine. If you prefer a dry piece of bread, please cross one arm over your chest. If you prefer a blessing and to receive neither bread nor wine, cross both arms over your chest. If stairs are in any way a difficulty for you, we'll also have a communion station 
right over here uh, under the pulpit on that side of the stairs. After you've received communion at the rail, you go through a door over here behind the organ and then down the steps back to your seat. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, 
and bring us to that heavenly country where with Paul and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us the peace. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth, bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share your bread, one cup. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.